Welcome. I'm just getting the robots ready for our IET stand at the York Festival Ideas on Sunday at the Guildhall in York. Um, I think I've said before, I volunteer for the Institution of Engineering Technology in our local network. Uh, it's a charity and our aim is to try and get children and parents actually interested in engineering, science and technology. So there's many ways we do that, but one of the ways which we do quite often is we'll take a stand at some event, some perhaps some educational event, public event, um, set up a couple of tables, we'll put up some banners like the one I've got here, and then we'll have some volunteers with usually a couple of robots to attract kids along and parents, and then they get into this and we get the opportunity to say, oh, how do you think these are made? Do you think you could design one? Etc. The real name of the game, actually, that's just the kind of attraction. The real name of the game is to give away pens. You probably won't be able to read that, but it just says, you know, IT, network, learn and collaborate. Uh, we've got bookmarks we can give away, magnetic bookmarks. Um, we've got bags. And really, the whole name of the game is, is just to get people curious and interested in engineering. But the practical side of it for us volunteers, and I think we're probably going to have five or six volunteers on the stand this coming Sunday, the practical side of it for us is getting the stuff ready, which I'm uh, trying to do now. So these two robots, they're battery powered. They probably last you know, 40 minutes if we're lucky. Uh, they're controlled by one of these kind of Xbox style controllers. Um, but we also have some robots which uh, basically just sit on a table, but like a robot arm, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and they're mains powered. So we can perhaps use these for a while. If the event is really busy, it's difficult to use these on the floor because people are going to trip over them. Uh, so, you know, we've got to have a couple of uh, ways of doing these things, quite a bit of equipment actually, one way or the other, to use in different circumstances. Anyway, I'll get these connected up. These are supposedly 18 channel. Um, I think I've got them both on channel one at the moment, so when I use the controller, both robots shoot off, so I've got to fix that somehow. Uh, we got these fairly recently. They're not that expensive. Um, that's basically what they look like anyway. So um, let's get the batteries in and I'll try them out. Now they do seem to be on separate channels. Yeah, that's okay. Now for one reason or another, um, one of these doesn't swivel at this point here. We've only just got these and we probably haven't tested that and uh, whatever. But I'm not going to try and sort it out today because I haven't got time. This is what I'm talking about. That one does for some reason. That one doesn't. Later. I think we can manage without the swivel because it does have a kind of... You can turn it like that or it's actually got a kind of jog mode anyway. The kids will still enjoy it. So we've also got these tabletop robots which are quite good because they're mains powered and uh, they'll last a long old while. So we just say to the kids, oh I can't do this look, <laughs> we just say to the kids, if you can pick up a block and move it, we'll give you a pen. And it's almost a joke really because it could be, and if you can't do it, we'll give you two pens. Because the whole aim of the game here is really to get people interested in you know, all this stuff. So giving away pens is really uh, the name of the game because it's got IT written on it and engineer written on it. Look how hopeless I am at this. Oh, here we go. That's better. Uh, enough already. And we have a couple of other robots too. I'll just show you those. We have a micro bit robot, BBC micro bit robot, and uh, you can program this from a laptop or a PC. And there's a simple graphic way of programming. This is great for a kind of classroom environment or a workshop environment. It's not so good in a kind of public open space um, because, you know, people are just walking past all the time. So I've programmed this in a, in a very simple way. When I turn it on, it will flash some lights at the front here. Totally random, really. Uh, and then if I press button A, it'll just spin around. And if I can catch it, I can press button B and it'll stop. But, <laughs> but anyway, it's just a curiosity to attract the kids for this sort of event that we're 
doing on Sunday. Now, how do you catch it? <laughs> ah! Stop. <laughs> Press button B and it kind of stops. It sort of jogs a little bit actually because the servo isn't quite balanced. Um, there's a potentiometer underneath to, to balance out the servo for its uh, zero point. But anyway, that's, that's all by the by. We just perhaps, we only got these recently and we probably haven't set it up quite right. Um, anyway, switch it off. And then this is the other one we've got. It's called an M-Bot. And uh, you turn it on. It's got a line following sensor or it's got an ultrasonic sensor at the front here. So you just put it into the right mode. Let's see if I can remember which one is which. I think that's line following. Put it down on this line. It should follow it. And then when it loses the line, it should try and find the line. So you see it's correcting its direction and now it's going... Oh, where's the line? So, um, when we get there, we'll probably lay out a proper track and it'll follow the track and we'll show the kids how it does that. And that's quite good for tabletop use. The IET has about 160,000 members worldwide. And I think in the UK, it's, there's something like 40 local volunteer networks. Now, obviously, we don't get paid. We are only volunteers. We do it because... You know, we enjoy it and we think it's a worthwhile thing to do. But we do get our expenses paid. The IET pays for this equipment, you know, now and then it, it gets replaced every few years. Uh, and for banners and things like that. And for our travelling expenses too. And actually, the North Yorkshire local network gets about £7,000 a year to spend on putting on events, buying bits of equipment, uh, sponsoring prizes and worthwhile causes like the York Festival of Ideas in this particular case. I'll put in a few still shots of our stand this coming Sunday. I won't take my video camera because I don't want to be, you know, bothered worrying about it and carrying a tripod and things like that. But I'll just throw in a, th a few shots. So I hope you've enjoyed that and it's given you some insight into the practical side of being a volunteer. But you don't have to go, you know, and, and staff one of these stands. You could just go and give a talk to a school or a university or, you know, it, because we're volunteers, we do what we enjoy. We're accountable for our uh, behaviour in, in a professional sense, but we can basically just choose whatever we want to do. I hope that was useful to you. Thanks for watching.